Welcome to Local Light, everybody. I'm John Compton, and uh, with me in studio today is a very familiar face. Many of you will recognize Amy from her TLC show, Little People, Big World. And she's here, though, to discuss the Amy Roloff Foundation. And we'll talk about the show a little bit, of course, but uh, primarily we want to talk about the foundation. So, um, Amy, I really appreciate you coming out. It's really a pleasure to meet you. Well, it's a pleasure meeting you, and I appreciate you having me, so thank you. Yeah, well, absolutely. Well, I want to know, what what is your foundation? And mm -hmm. it started. you started it, like, in 2009, right? Yeah, I started the, my charity foundation, Amy Roloff Charity Foundation, in 2009. And I think what really, you know, spurned me to, to begin that is that there was another nonprofit organization that I've been a part of probably for about 20, 25 years, and that was Dorth Athletic Association of America. And they were always in need of money, uh, fundraising. And I thought, well, you know, here I have this show. Um, I've got some name recognition of some sort. I would really like to make a difference and see about raising some money for them because it truly had an impact on my life. And now that I have a son with uh, dwarfism, uh, going through the ranks of participating in sports through DAAA, I thought there has got to be something I can do. So I wanted to raise some money and um, I thought I could go underneath their nonprofit, but for some reason I couldn't and I had to scramble. Well, what do I do? How do I set up my charity foundation? And what year was this? This was 2009, beginning oh, this late was 2008, in early 2009. Oh, wow. And so um, I thought, you know, I don't know anything about starting a foundation, even though I participated and worked with other charities. And so I started it up and went through the process of raising some money for DAAA and another place called Bridge Meadows that uh, caters to foster care families and children and low income senior housing. So I thought, well, what am I going to do? I'll put on a golf tournament. I'll have this big dinner. A lot of people should know me by now. <laughs> so take advantage of the opportunities and maybe my celebrity, uh, my branding and people recognizing me to really, you know, raise some money and, you know, make a difference. And so then I thought, well, golf tournament, I've never played golf in my life, even though I'm a very competitive person. So I had to take up golf lessons. And um, so that was interesting yeah. because I wanted to hit the ball as far as anyone else could hit. Well, that's not really going to be real. <laughs> I have to learn to hit the ball as far as I could hit it. So I, I planned it, and we struggled. We, it, it was tough. It was very tough. I had a lot of challenges. I was very close, come to June of that year, 2009, of canceling the whole thing because we didn't have any monies coming in. We didn't have a title sponsor. We had really no businesses signed up. No one um, doing sponsorships, and it was June. The event was in August, and I was still filming. I had to be away for a month, and I had a very core team that took care of it. I said, these are my goals. I've got to go away. Can you do it? And um, it was close. It was tough. I had uh, uh, people doubt that I would be able to do it. Mm -hmm. um, you're wasting your time. Did that you know, sort of light is, the fire under you though? It did light the fire underneath me because being hopefully that competitive spirit, I thought, no, I, this is something that I need to do for myself in some ways and prove to myself that I can really do this, but also prove to other people that I can do this because it was more about, it was more than just me. Mm -hmm. I wanted to make a difference. I wanted to really help other people, and especially an organization that really made an impact of me. And then looking at all these other organizations that need help in their fundraising, or don't have a name recognition, or something of that sort, then I began to think, this is kind of cool yeah. to have my own charity foundation. What do I want to do with it? I want to focus on kids. So we've just revamped it, our mission statement, and it is truly about advocating, supporting, inspiring kids um, that are going through challenges. And so kids from all types of backgrounds? All types of backgrounds, yeah. So what are some of the organizations that you actually work with, and why did you choose those particular ones? Well, my first ones obviously was DAAA, because mm -hmm. I thought start with something that I already know, Familiar but, also, but it's small, it's a small organization. Um, Bridge Meadows was just, they have done a tremendous amount of fundraising, but they're more or less intergenerational, so they're building these homes for families that are bringing in foster care children, 
also homes for low-income senior housing. So it's providing the grandparents kind of feel for these kids that are going through a tremendous time being adjusted to a new family before hopefully they get adopted into their permanent family. Okay. I've helped out a teen home pregnancy uh, uh, center. I've helped out homeless um, a homeless center that takes in the whole family where the father or the male doesn't have to go someplace else and the mom and the children go someplace right. else. They can stay in this you know, um, environment. Keep the whole family together. Yeah, yeah. I've helped out um, our local Special Olympics because I figured it tagged and was very similar to DAAA, though they just focus on dwarfism. This focuses on kids and adults, but with a different type of life challenges. Um, helped out our local uh, Shriners Children's Hospital. So part of our you know, vision is also doing our individual fundraising, which we put on our uh, golf uh, event and dinner event. And this year we called it Starry Night, Summer's Day. I thought and, that and was really a raised, nice flair. Exactly. I know. I like the name, too. And you yeah. raised over $100,000, Yeah, right? we raised over 100000 k this year, uh, uh, one and a half times more than we did the first year. So I was really, really pleased. And again, we went through struggle because I was really hoping to get a title sponsor. I was really hoping that um, some more people would be on board. But uh, we had less people attend the dinner. It might have been the weekend that we chose. Mm. Less people participating in the golf, but yet we raised one and a half times more. And um, I, it, I, it was thrilling. I, I was, it, it was flabbergasting to, to be able to do that. Um, but I have a good team and I recognize picking good people that have the same heart and passion of what you want to do and putting themselves second and not thinking what, how they can benefit right. in their own life through networking and all this other stuff but truly taking all of that and benefiting Amy Roloff Charity Foundation because I want to make a difference in kids' lives because I know what it's like right. to be different, to be challenged, to go through obstacles. Maybe not as, uh, as, as much or severe as some of these kids that I'm helping, but I can at least have compassion and have empathy for what they're going through. Absolutely. So it's, I have a good team. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I want to continue talking about that when we come back from the commercial. And I also want to ask you about your Haiti trip. Oh, yeah. Because um, okay. that sounds like that was pretty life-changing. You know? It was. So, it very much was. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you guys, we will continue the conversation with Amy Roloff um, and the Amy Roloff Charity Foundation right after these messages. Don't go anywhere.